there for Smitty. Third time. couple games I ever played organized hockey in CYO, I was a forward, and we didn't have a very good team, and my dad was coaching, and the goaltender didn't show up one game, so I guess he wasn't scared to put anyone else in there, so he put his son in there, and I think we got beat 27 nothing, and we've been trying to get even ever since. The words of Jerry Cheevers, formerly goaltender for the National Hockey League champion Boston Bruins, now performing for the Cleveland Crusaders of the New World Hockey Association. One of the top goalies in the game, Cheevers holds an NHL record for playing 32 consecutive games without a loss. But there's more to Jerry Cheevers' life than flying pucks and hockey sticks. He owns thoroughbred horses. He's written a book. He's a television commentator. He's a husband and a father. Lasagna right now looks like oh, vegetable God. soup. The Cheevers have three children, Craig eight, Cheryl five, and Robbie four. Oh, Betty and Jerry were high school sweethearts. Want some cheese, Joe? Put the cheese for? For the lasagna. I met him when I was 14 years old, and I was going to high school with his brother, Pat, and we were going to a teen dance Saturday night. We needed a ride. So he said, my brother will take us, and it was Jerry. And uh, he asked me out after that, and we dated for seven years before we were married. Some sauce. Here you want some sauce, honey? What is it? Fred, do you? No. What's that? Sauce. Can I see the sauce? I have one, Do you want some? Um, Believe it or not, this lasagna is good. Oh, yeah, mommy. Do you want some more? Wow. Well, how good is it? Do you want no, some more? I gotta tell you what happened here. Well, who's going to say The guys on the team decided. We were sitting in a bar the other day having a few drinks. Mm. Whose wife made the best chili? Well, how do you know when you have a taste for everybody's? Well, hold it now. We decided to have a chili cook-off. So we got five entries whose husband thought their wives make good chili. And uh, we'll get the single guys on the team, or whoever doesn't enter the contest to be the judges. Who, did you enter me? Yeah. Yay! I don't make very good chili. Diane makes good chili. Diane's, is she? Mm -hmm. Make better than you? I think so. I'll practice. Skippy's wife, Diane. Yeah. Bobby Wooden's wife. Mm-hmm. Billy Horton's wife. Paul I don't know. There's a couple more. that We've got five entrants, though, for the chili cook-off. Hey, that's good. Ray Clearwater wants to enter his mother. <laughs> the Cheevers have purchased a home in a Cleveland suburb. It's obvious they plan to stay. The new league has raised the value of hockey players, and Jerry has hired a business manager. The first order of business was selling the old house in Ontario. Betty, you want to sign? Okay. Get over here and uh, while you're signing, Jerry and I'll look. I don't think I realized when we were first married that you could be moved so often. As long as you don't have a family, it's very easy. You just pack your bags and go, but once you have children, it gets difficult, and even more so now when we have one and well, two in school. But I don't know. The only sad part I feel is leaving your friends that you've made. But it seems there's nice people everywhere, and we've kept our friends. The other thing that uh, has been accomplished over the past few days is that uh, your newest horse, uh, your two-year-old Philly Mary Spice, has uh, all been put in your name now. And uh, in the name of your... Your stable, so to speak, is, uh, has been named Crusader Stable. Cheevers has always been fascinated by horse racing. He owns several thoroughbreds, but Jerry has other hobbies. He likes to read, and in the past year, he's written a book. Then your book, you know, your uh, goaltender book, uh, we've just received uh, another royalty check on that. They've uh, seems like they're doing pretty good, even though you left Boston, you're still selling books. I did an article in a Toronto newspaper with a a writer, Trent Frayne, and he said, let's try and write a book. And this is when the big fad was someone writing a book every other week. I said, well, we'll experiment. We'll try it for a month. He says, well, where's all this about guys taking bennies and everything like that? 
And then I had to say, hold it. I said, that just doesn't happen as far as I'm concerned. And we got right off that, and we decided that we'll, we'll put humor into it. I mean, you know, Boston had a, quite a controversial team in the past few years, and there's a lot of players you could talk about without hurting anyone and, and having a lot of fun doing it. So it ended up this way, and by the end, I really enjoyed doing it. I read every book or short story that Damon Runyon's ever wrote, because mainly most of them are all racetrack characters he writes about. I like reading trivia books like uh, history of television or the history of movies or history of a certain actor's movies like, you know, John Wayne or Humphrey Bogart or James Cagney. I enjoy reading those things. With Cheevers in goal, the Crusaders have had remarkable success in their first year. Before the season opened, most experts felt Cleveland would be hard-pressed to make the playoffs. But on this day, Cheevers and his teammates find themselves in first place in the WHA's Eastern Division. Cheevers does not like practice, but at this workout, he will spend extra time in the nets. The Crusaders have a game coming up with the New England Whalers. The Whalers are in second place, Hi, only a couple of points behind Cleveland. Everyone says that goaltenders are a different breed, but I think that comes with the job. I mean, I don't think you're that way before it starts. It's just part of being a goaltender. Like, there's 50 professional goaltenders around, or, or a number, something like that, and they're all basically different. But uh, th there might be something common amongst all these 50 goaltenders, and I really can't point it out. Maybe it's because they're crazy or something. I don't know. Though they've been together only a few months, the Cleveland Crusaders are a close-knit team. Off the ice, they spend a good deal of time together. And for some reason, the team is loaded with trivia buffs. You know what the final, here's the final, the one that was deciding the whole championship. What, what's the name of that place you were born? Cudworth. Cudworth. Is it east or west of Saskatoon? Well, I have to Who give cares? him an easy question, <laughs> right? I couldn't give him a hard one because you would say no, right? Eh? Yeah. So I had to give him a question that he could say yes or no. I want to say that my partner's dumb, but I was giving I this one. <laughs> but I didn't know where I didn't know where on the other side of Saskatoon at the time. Jerry, what's your favorite movie of all time? Boots Malone. Oh. Boots Malone. Haven't you ever seen that? Have you ever seen Boots Malone? No, who plays him? William Holden. It's a horse oh, racing section. Oh, that's great. It's very good. Isn't it good? Was About the kid when he puts him up in the saddle oh, and he tries. The guy and the little kid that had the jockey and the kid and he wanted right. to send him to school or something like that. He was a rich kid. No, he, yeah, he was a runaway and he loved the horses. He loved him. Oh, really? Yeah. She loved him, but she was actually Jeez, you like horses so much. You must have really liked Black Beauty then, eh? I loved it. I fell in love with Black Beauty. How about my friend Flecka? Huh? My no, friend Flecka. I like Black Beauty better. Black you like Elizabeth Beauty? Taylor? No, I like at that time. Oh, you know I like that. At that oh time, that's right, yeah. I like Black Beauty. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve. No, right there. Oh, no. Oh, and how do you Nine. Nine. I don't know. Well, he's got a five. Okay, you got eight? Right there. When I play a game with the kids, there's no way I go out of my way to let them win. There's no cheating involved or anything like that. Uh, and I don't hold back if we're playing crazy eights or playing uh, uh, snakes and ladders or any type of a game or a horse racing game or whatever game we have at the house. If they're going to beat me, they're going to beat me legit. That shows my competitiveness. And I think I've instilled it in them, too. Okay, my turn. I'm bone bruised. Cheevers has been known to enjoy a horse race game of another sort. And perhaps the Crusaders' next visit to California is on his mind. There's a racetrack about 20 miles from my hometown, and that seemed to be the Saturday routine for the boys from the pool hall, at least on Saturday afternoon at the racetrack, and pool our money and try and make some money and everything. And I really got fascinated with the sport. The next year I went and applied for a job there in the mornings, walking horses, and 
the year after that I was rubbing horses and was a semi-groom and mucking out stalls and kind of got to know everyone around there. And finally, in the last four or five years, I've been working with the Ontario Jockey Club, publicity or public relations, and I did TV and had a live show at the racetrack for them. I really enjoy it. I love the people around the district. When he has a day off on the road, Cheevers is likely to spend it at a racetrack. His favorite of them all is Santa Anita. <laughs> you better believe it. If Santa Anita for him, I buy the form in the racing point. If for him, racing point. finish the game at 40 or 45 or however old I am, and I'm secure enough to win this game. I'd like to maybe own five or six horses, I think in these next seven, eight years, if I can spend my summers in the right spots and learn, and I, I think I might be able to own them and train them myself. That's the that's broad, she's in front. Earl, Earl Zerma. Earl Zerma in front, by a length, one half. Okay, home is second by three lengths. You know what is third ahead. They're turning into the stretch, Earl Zerma. But plans of training horses are for the future. For the present, the only race Cheevers cares about is in the Eastern Division of the World Hockey Association. Tonight, Jerry and his team, the Cleveland Crusaders, will meet the New England Whalers in a battle for first place. In the second period, the Cleveland Crusaders and the New England Whalers are locked in a scoreless tie. The game is wide open, a duel between goaltenders. Al Smith of the Whalers and Jerry Cheevers of Cleveland. Get out, John Cohen! John! Woo! I thought it went in. <laughs> not time, not time, Billy. Give it to that <laughs> guy at college. <laughs> Who are you kidding? The score is still Cleveland nothing, New England nothing. Though they're a young team, the Crusaders are a quiet bunch. They use the break before the final period for what they need most, a little rest. I get a spear, cross-check, and a slap in the face in with a second. <laughs> I told him his head was cut. I said his head was cut. And it was. He was bleeding. He kept skating away. He says, hey, dummy, your head's cut. He says, I know. At the end of the period. 
The Crusaders coach Hi, is a quiet man, longtime minor leaguer Bill Needham. Gary's a leader, likes to lead, he likes to win, and uh, this helps all the players because they're right behind him 100%. Where, Billy? Billy? He's great for the morale with everybody. He's making big money, but this doesn't enter into the way he's playing. He's playing like a young kid out there. Four! Go, go! Betty Cheever sits with a group of players' wives at most home games. Hockey is a violent sport, and injuries are a part of it. And no one knows this better than these women. Our first son was born prematurely, and Jerry was out of town at the time. And when he got back, much to his surprise, we had this three 13-pound baby. And that night, they had traveled all night by bus, and the next night he had to play. And this is when he was playing without his mask, and he got hit right full in the mouth by a puck and it took five teeth out and just cut his mouth, and that was about the worst I've seen. But he's had dislocated shoulders and his share of bruises. Keep going, Paul! Oh. You oh. He's not really a fighter. I think he's more of a lover. I just know he couldn't hurt anybody. That's what I kept thinking. I thought, I'm sure he's faking it out there. I mean, if he were mad enough, if someone really provoked him, then he would really fight. But I think he'd rather stick to what he's supposed to do, tending goal. Too deep. As soon as you see me lose the puck, you got it right out in the slot there. Right away. Okay. Midway through the final period, the game is still scoreless. Crusaders score on a deflection, and it's one to nothing. Now it's up to Cheevers to preserve the victory. He knows that New England will launch a furious assault. He's on you, Cindy. He's on you. He's on you. Jack! 
Jerry Cheevers gets the shutout, but later he'll call it a great team effort. There you go, guys. There you go, Jimmy. 